been uh, assigned for two weeks, and we do everything. We do the serving and the measuring and breathing and stone removal and clean up and all that kind of stuff. So if needed. <laughs> um, so what we talk about doing now is we're going to split those two weeks and allow you an opportunity to sign up for groups that you want to do. You can sign up on both lists, so there's one list for uh, serving and one list for entering and greeting. If you know you're going to be here and there's two of you and you want to do it all, great, sign up on both weeks. If you prefer to do one or the other, sign up appropriately. So okay. they are on the table, so we can start now and then you'll get an official list of the mail Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Yep. And there is a little asterisk that goes with that. If nobody signs up, then they will be reassigned yeah. again, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> you get a choice for a while here. <laughs> so, and um, next Sunday is our rededication Sunday. Uh, the 10th, that's right. I, I keep losing the third in there. So next Sunday... Uh, Bonnie will be filling our pulpit for us because we usually end up up north for that. So our family will be gone again. So, but I, um, yeah, so, but as you were speaking this morning and visiting back and forth, please greet one another and the Lord as you come. So, with it, so, there. I'm used to having one bulletin instead of two sheets up here. So, but we will get a new bulletin cover shortly. It's on order. It's on order, so all right, good. So, but welcome here. Also, there will be a Bible study for, uh, and it'll start September 17th. It begins at 8.30 in the morning, and it's done at 9.20. So, and there will be coffee with that. I don't know about the if there's any cookies or anything. If you want to bring some, that's up to you. <laughs> okay. But Bibles, please. And it's going to be interesting to listen to that conversation also. I thought, so. I thought Bible study was September 21st. No, 17th. The 17th. What day is that on? What day is that on? It's the Sunday morning Sunday school. Yeah, it's a Sunday morning Bible study. Well, it's, well, that will yeah Todd is okay so but yeah well it wouldn't be on a Thursday but if Todd still wants to I have talked to the men about doing it on a Tuesday yes Yes, Todd would do a men's one, he said, on Tuesday night is when it was, before, because that's, yeah, I just said that, Tom, okay, yeah, so, so, yeah, we can do both of them, because some can make it the Sunday morning, and some cannot make it Sunday morning, and the uh, evening would be available for more, so, okay, now we got that all worked out, all right, <laughs> let's. But welcome. It's nice to be back up here. So let's begin with the gathering. Here in this place, God's light is shining. Now at this time, we are called to be God's justice. Within this community, we are Christ's body here on the earth. In this place, Christ's voice is calm. Let us pray. Gracious God, our help and our hope, be with us this day. Bless our time together as we seek your guidance and grow in your grace. Gather us as one body that we will be a precious part of your kingdom on this earth and in this place. In the name of Christ, who called us here, we pray. Amen. Please 
join in our song. God leads his dear children along. Well, it's nice to know that the computer has a pause also. <laughs> so, you want a hammer? <laughs> So. <laughs> okay. Okay, one minute? Yeah. Oh, all right. We can fill in for one minute again, okay? All right. Let us please join together in our call to worship. This morning is actually, actually the first part of next week because if we look around at each other that is here, we are a whole new church with all the different people that have come, with the different gifts that they have brought, we are not what we used to be. We are brand new. And so we celebrate this as the whole body of Christ here. So in our call to worship, and it says, we are called into this place. It's not by accident. Okay? Please join me. We are called into this place. We are called into this body. The body that Christ present here on earth. We are called in the kingdom of God. Doesn't that want to make you shout hallelujah that we are part of that kingdom, that we are not left out, that we have much to be joyful and glad about? The weather might be hot, but God is awesome. <laughs> so. As we begin, please take a moment for yourself to honor the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I know sometimes it can seem like a long time, but I do not like to interrupt those that are having a fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please, as we come before them, we want our hearts clean and our souls clean, and we bring our confession before them because we want that renewing and that refreshing and that forgiveness to wash over us and through us, O oh Lord. So we come, Lord Jesus, before you and confess because we know you listen, but you also, also cleanse us from our unholiness and from our unrighteousness so we leave here cleansed in the presence of the Holy Spirit also hallelujah please join in the unison prayer together merciful God hear our prayers when we have made you lives bitter with hard service or cruel words forgive us and guide us back 
to your path of love and compassion. When we have imposed ourselves and our agendas on those around us, forgive us and help us to listen and cooperate with loving hearts. When we have been the oppressor, forgive us and redeem us to be your people of justice and compassion. In the blessed name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I'm just going to have Mickey stand up again, but all right. The words of assurance, Lord, who was and is on our side. Sin would have swallowed us up alive, but by the mighty thanks be to God, who is on our side. He will not let the devil have us. And we are assured of that always. Jessica, no music yet. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ. And he's had a renewing of his mind. And it says that, that you may discern what is the will of God, acceptable and perfect. He can finally actually accept the will of God because he finally believes truly in what God does and who God is. If we don't believe that, we don't really pay much attention to God. Look at our world. Look at the United States. We can say we know God, but we don't act like him. We don't act like a nation under God. But Tucker Carlson has now ready to proclaim that. And once you get I know when I did, I had to tell people. I couldn't keep it quiet at all because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it goes on and it says, for by the grace given, we didn't earn it, okay? We didn't buy it. It was given. For by the grace given to us, I say to every one of you, do not think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. If you want to see people that do that, look at politicians. Okay, look at our governors, look at our leaders. Look at the Department of Education. Look at the Department of Health. They all think they're smarter than we are. They think they're smarter than God. That's where we get in trouble at all. But to think of yourself with sober judgment each one according to the measure of faith that God has assigned to you. We think faith is, on, faith is on our own, but it's not. We can't even get faith on our own. It is assigned to us by the Lord God Almighty. We have to claim it, but it's assigned to us. And so according to the measure of faith, and that's a question you can ask the Lord God. How much faith have you assigned to me? Then sit down and listen for an answer from him. Because he will. Faith increases by your belief. It does every day. For as in one body we have many members, but we know even here not all members have the same function at all. So we are many who are in the body of Christ. And individually, we are members of one another. And that's not just of this church. That is of the whole body of Christ. All others that belong to Jesus, we are members one with another in honoring and worshiping and praising the Lord God and bowing before him. So, And we have different gifts. Some of you have a beautiful voice that you can sing. You can play the organ, and I'm just glad that our organ got to be played again. Some of you are great working with your hands. Some of you are diplomats. Some of you are teachers. Some of you take care of, it's just a wide range of gifts that are available to us as the body of Christ right here. We have gifts that differ 
according to the grace again given to us. Given to us. If prophecy, you can prophesy in portion to faith. Most of us are afraid to do that. We are afraid to prophesy. And I will join with the other prophets. I do see the youth in this nation uprising underneath the hand of the Lord God Almighty, that they will be strong in faith. They will lead this nation back to the righteousness and holiness. And I believe that with my whole, whole heart, that God will bring our youth up and they will become the leaders. So I can prophesy that. But I have not come to that prophecy on my own. I have heard others also. And prophecy is out that, this, that the political part of this nation is at war with the Lord God Almighty. And I believe that because they are absolutely against everything that God is for. And so we know that God will wage war on his own and in his own way to bring them down. But we have gifts that differ according to the grace given us. We have ministering gifts. The ministering gifts are going out and helping others. It's putting boxes together to send out for Christmas time. It's having bags that set out here in the front to pass out a wreath is ministering. But ministry is also going to homes and talking with people and sharing and praying with them and picking up a phone and calling them so they're not alone. And we have teachers here, mighty teachers, in different ways, teaching many different things. We don't all teach the same thing. I can teach you probably how to upholster furniture. I can do that. But you can't teach me how to weld. I don't like electricity that well, OK? So I'll definitely let you be the welder, OK? So and exhorters. An exhorter is one who gives encouragement to those that are really sad and lonely. You just come along. And sometimes it's not even that. If somebody does a good job, you say, you did a good job. I'm glad to be here this day. That's encouragement. I thank you for your sharing with us when you bring lunch. It's a great lunch. You all do great with that. The encouragement is to say thank you, and we appreciate that. Sometimes we don't do that often enough. I know sometimes I don't do it often enough, that I appreciate all the effort that you have put into this, and I thank you. So... And for good givers, give generously, OK? And if you take a Bible scripture, and who gave generously? The lady did. She didn't have anything at all except two little mites. And her last two mites, where did she put them? She put him in the offering. And the word behind that, she has given more than all because she gave all herself and what she had. But generosity is also a gift that God has given you to heal, to help others. And the generosity can be in kindness, but it can anything that you give out from yourself to other people is generosity, how amazing that is. And leaders need to be diligent. And we find our examples of leaders in our world not diligent, but selfish and self-centered. The diligence means they love and they care about the people that are there. I know that I feel that diligence within myself to be diligent for the body of Christ here is so precious, so very, very precious to God. 
and I want to give exactly all that I can give because it is so important to all of us, and it's important to the Lord God. So we are diligent, and we're compassionate for others. And all of this done is done in, not begrudgingly, but in cheerfulness, that we're glad that we can do this. And we let love be genuine. Comes from deep within, not fake. And the next verse kind of threw me a little bit, but it says hate, hate. But hate is for what? Hate what is evil. And hold fast to that which is good. Cling to that which is good. Celebrate that which is good. And love one another with mutual affection. Outdoing one another and showing honor. Don't try to outdo each other who can beat the other one. That's not honor. Okay? <laughs> Just do it because you want to do it and honor. And do not lack zeal. Be ardent in the spirit and serve the Lord. And I had to look up what ardent meant this morning because I wasn't really sure. It means be passionate. Passionate is not ho-hum. Passionate is I'm going to stick everything I have into it. There are things that we are very passionate about. One I know here is passionate about fishing, and he does a really good job of that. But there's so many things that you can be passionate about. But this is be passionate about the Lord God in your life. Be passionate about the Lord Jesus Christ. Be passionate about being a member of one to each other. Be passionate because the Holy Spirit has came in and has lived within us. Be passionate when you serve the Lord. Let it come from deep within you, but celebrate it also. Celebrate it wildly. Out at the park, it was a celebration out there. It was fun to be out there. It was a place to be celebrated because God's word went through the whole town that day. The singing went through the whole town that day. That's something to be passionate about. It really is. Tucker Carlson is now passionate about being a Christian. How amazing. So, and extend hospitality to strangers, always. The next one comes in really hard, but it's what we definitely need to do. It's not easy to pick this one up. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We can do 15 pretty easy, but verse 14, bless those who persecute you is very hard for us, very difficult. In fact, we can take this verse and say, Lord, this is impossible for me to do. And I can't even possibly do it unless I ask for your cleansing and your help in this. Because my heart does not feel like blessing them. I really want to persecute them. But his word says, bless them. And rejoice with those who who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. And when I was in a church in Raymond, a lady came up outside the door. And some have heard this. And she was not dressed very well at all. She, in fact, she smelled like alcohol. And people didn't really want to open the door for her to come in. But they did. And they welcomed her. And they sat by her with that day. But she was somebody that wanted to see if they would let her into the church. 
because of the way she was dressed and a little dirty and smells like alcohol. And they opened the door wide for him, her, and let her in. Do not be haughty. Welcome whoever enters the door. And do not repay evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends upon you, live peaceably with all. These are not easy things to do. In our own minds, we can see places where we're not really living peaceably with some. And we have to talk ourselves into being able to do that most of the time. Because we're kind of haughty. I I don't think I'm the only one either. But God is telling us there's a better way to do this. Much better way to do it. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far on you, as it depends to live peaceably with all. Now we come to the really tough part, the really hard part. Now, beloved, never avenge yourselves. That's what it says in God's words. Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. But now, if your enemies, please note, not friends, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals upon their head. Why would it make such a difference? If I have an enemy and I bring him a loaf of bread and I'm walking there to give him a loaf of bread and I'm only doing it because God's word told me to do it. I'm not doing it because I really want to do it. But God told me I needed to do this. I need to feed him. And so I come walking begrudgingly, probably. But I gave him that loaf of bread. And he, not so ungraciously, took it from me also. He might have made a comment, what took you so long? Hmm. So then we have this thought going through our head, well, why am I doing this? But God says, that's not all. If he doesn't have any water and he's your enemy, please take him or her some water. And you again begrudgingly go because God said, and you take the water, you take a pail of water to him and offer it to him. At that time, there's something different that happens in his whole countenance. He almost smiles, almost. But you know it's got to go on his head. We are enemies. What are you doing this for? What do you want from me? Why are you doing this? And what is our answer back? Because God told me to. That is our answer back. And you look at him once more again, or her. And it is a fact now that you have become friends. You are no longer an enemy anymore. His mindset has changed, and your mindset has changed. 
by being obedient, by being obedient unto the word of God is what made the difference because God watched every step that you took. He walked that with you. You did not walk by yourself, but he walked that with you. So it is be brave, be bold. You're a living sacrifice, remember. And God has assigned you faith, and we can do this because God wants to change not only their lives but our own because from that came forgiveness in him and forgiveness in myself. And we could actually embrace each other. There used to be an old saying out there. Most of us remember it. Kill them with kindness. Kindness does amazing things. It doesn't look like it, but it definitely does. And if it is possible with God to bring enemies to be friends, let us pray. Heavenly Father, you work these wonders in so many different ways, in things that we definitely don't want to do. And yet, we look at all the other things that you have given us and the greatness that you have actually bestowed upon us to be in the children of you, the Lord God Almighty, to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to be being, being disciples of you, the Lord Jesus Christ. How can we not but celebrate? Lord, we know in our feeble minds we have a hard time thinking the way that you think. But ask, Lord, that you will give us courage and strength to do those things that you ask us to do because they are out of love, compassion, and mercy. And you are all of those. So we celebrate, Lord, as being members of the body of Jesus Christ. We have a story to tell in a compassionate way. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Do we have a song? Okay. God leads his dear children along, fits in perfectly here. Go for it. In shady green pastures, so Please rich don't. and so sweet, God leads his dear, dear children. children. the weary ones feet. God leads his dear children along. Some through the water, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. Sometimes on the mountain, the sun shines so bright, God leads his dear children. Sometimes in the valley, in darkest of night, God leads his dear children along. Though sorrows befall us and Satan oppose, God leads his dear children along. Through grace we can conquer 
Defeat all our foes. God leads his dear children home. Some through the waters, some through the floods, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives the song in the night season and all the day long. And we're having Jesus, okay? Be seated. At this time, I would still like to do joys and concerns. His name is Jeffrey. He has pancreatic cancer. He is now going down to Rochester. His, he went down and got tested, and it has grown, actually. And so his parents and them, they are all asking for prayer. So I want to be, as a congregation, part of that miracle. Because I think when we pray for others, we become part of the miracle because God hears our voice. I know there's so many that God is touched and healed. And so we need to be part of that. So is there anybody else that needs, that would like to share of somebody? I do have one more. 
Don Molinar, we're part of that miracle. I was at his house. He was the one, he needed a hip replacement. And so I stopped up to see him the other day. He has to go back down to Rochester, but he has no infection. And he got up and he walked. He still has to use the walker yet because he can only put 50% on it yet. But he's getting ready to go out in his skid loader. And you can imagine what his wife is telling him on that. So the miracle hasn't quite come true yet, but he has definitely changed his whole countenance has changed around him, that he is a man that is looking forward to a future. And so we are part of that. So so is there anybody that has anything that they want to share? Rachel. I'm not married, but I've had a breast cancer, and she just had her three months and she cleared. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Anybody else? Diane. Okay, so Bruce lost five inches in my eye uh, about a couple months ago, something like that, three, four months ago. And the doctors have done tests and stuff, and <clears throat> they said it's a, a bruise or swollen or something in his eye. He got that nerve. But the doctor chose not to do treatment. She thinks it will be healed by itself mm-hmm. or let's say by God. And so the next appointment is in December and we're hoping that it will all be back soon. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else this morning? First, my mom, she's still whining and complaining. <laughs> so <laughs> she's still whining. <laughs> have something to keep you moving. <laughs> so, Beth. Pray for all the college students that um, are leaving their homes and starting their journey. Uh, Isaac just moved out yesterday for his journey to be a pastor, so we're excited for him, but also just nervous, you know, as he yeah. leaves, he's not going to leave his home for a new long time. So. A lot of influence out there. He's, he's not too far, but still it's, yeah, it's a change. Our son is in treatment in California for alcoholism. Been in about 20 days now, 18, 20 days. Uh, we need prayer for him, but hopefully this time it will take effect. Okay. Can we have a, can you give us his name? Kim. Who? Kim. Kim. Oh, wait. Kim. Kim. T-I-M. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody have a praise to share with us about Pam? I just need to give testimony about Carissa. So she has been, she has been out being challenged by the world for God. And with the way the world is, random people have been asking her if she believes in the Lord. And I've always told her, you know, always keep Jesus in your heart and always say yes. And so she's had just random people that she doesn't even know ask her that, and she has said yes every time. And I just, that's a great testimony. I feel nowadays, so yep. don't be afraid to admit you believe in the Lord. Yep, very true. Very, very true. So anything else this morning that has been going on? No, even if we haven't had a lot of rain, we still have beautiful Flowers and other things to look at. It's it's really pretty out yeah. there. Very much so. Very that makes me think of my grapevines. Every time I pick up those grapevines and I look at those vines, they it takes me right back to the scripture of how we have the vines and the grapes this year are just absolutely full. Yeah. Yeah. And all God's blessings are yeah. there. Well, I think part of our horrible winter, I think, had a lot to do with that. Because when the horrible winter brought a lot of water to our ground, and it was so dry before that. So I think a lot of this got, because the acorns shouldn't even be falling now. Usually they don't come down until after the first frost. Then you get the acorns. 
And the only reason there's that many airy coins is God rewatered our land with the rain that was out there. I know we need more rain, but he, with the snow, God used that with it. So, so anything else this morning? I would just like to share with you, because I would like to do this next, <clears throat> not next Sunday, but with the reannunciation of the rededication of our congregation. It says in our bulletin that I have called people up to come up for anointing. And I really believe in my heart that this is time to start that over again, to not be afraid to come up to be anointed, because I know there are churches around and places where healing is really making itself known into the body of Christ. And the last one a lady had shared with me, the pastor said to them, I want you to place a hand on any part of your body that hurts, that is not functioning correctly. And I want you to believe in your heart that God is willing to bring healing here to this place and healing onto you. And so the prayer was said that God would raise, please reach down and touch each one as to where their healing needs to be. Some was on the eyes, some was on the ears, some was on the shoulders, some was on the hips, every place there was. And God's presence fell that day in that congregation and they were all healed that day. I believe that God is going to arise again and bring healing back to the body of Christ. I know it's been there, but we have not acknowledged it either. We're afraid sometimes to come up and stand before people and say that we're not doing well. But we have to stop that. Because remember, we're members of one another. We're part of each other. And this is the best place. So after we do the dedication, and, probably, and on the dedication day, I will ask people to come forward if they need prayers for healing. And we will go beyond that and pray and praise and worship in glad adoration of our Lord God. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. I would take a time of silent prayer for you to speak to the Lord yourself. We praise you, O oh Lord. We praise you for those that had breast cancer and still dealing with it, but that are healed, Lord, and have no, it has to be by your hand. It's just not by doctors and nurses and pills. It has to be by your hand, O oh Lord. And for that, O oh Lord, we celebrate with them what you are doing. We celebrate with this young man called Jeff, O oh Lord. We just ask for your hand to reach down at this moment and touch him. Lay your hand upon him, O oh Lord. Lay it on him heavily that he knows that you are there, that he even has this part that he can feel your breath upon him. We ask for your healing of him completely, that he will be a living testimony of you to help to share with others how marvelous and glorious that you have saved his whole life. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your touch upon him. And Lord, we pray the same for Bruce. We pray that your hand will be upon him right now. We pray that there will be a wisp that goes across in front and he will feel your breath standing there by him. And that your hand will be upon him, Lord. We pray for full and complete healing in Bruce's eye. And we rejoice in this, O oh Lord. And we say, 
Thank you. And for Jim's mom, oh Lord, grant her someone to come alongside that would bring peace and joy to her, that would truly surprise her, but would just come up and make her life so full of joy that she will be astonished herself, oh Lord. Watch over her. And we pray for all of those students headed back to college, Lord. Especially we pray for the Christians right now, that you will just surround them. You will hold them up. You will place within their mouths things that are to say, but within their hearts, they will just feel your heart beat also within them, and they will stand strong in courage and in faith and in joy. Because what you give us shines. Other people see it. We don't necessarily notice it ourselves, but others do. You're different. Let their light shine, O oh Lord, where they are at, to bring others to the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for Isaac as he goes, and Christina as she goes, Lord. We just surround them. Give them courage and strength and your amazing joy in their life. For that, we thank you, O oh Lord. And we pray for Tim, Lord, and the program that he is going through. But we pray, Lord, that he actually sees that you are a part of this. You are the biggest part of this. That you comfort him and you encourage him, and you stand with him on them horrible days that the one that he does see is you, the Lord Jesus Christ. Even them days when he's angry and upset, Lord, may your countenance just surround him and bring a calmness to his heart, his soul, and his mind. For that, Lord, we so Put your touch and your seal upon him, O oh Lord, and grant him strength to continue going and have total and complete victory over this, that it cannot consume him. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen and hallelujah. And we thank you for the wonderful way that our land is that you created everything. Even in drought, flowers come and grapes come. You are precious, O oh Lord. And now, O oh Lord, if you... I would... Uh, one more, okay. I would like to bless those that are doing Bible studies, Lord. That your blessings and your countenance be upon them. And anybody that enters in to that place with them will feel a sense of peace but a sense of need to be there to listen for your word and listen to your word and talk about your word Lord and share for this we thank you and now oh Lord as you have taught us our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please. At this time, we will receive our gifts and our offerings.
for all those givers out there that give so graciously. Continue your blessings unto them, O Lord, because they give not only this way financially, but they give of themselves in all things. And for this we praise you and honor you. In the precious, precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, amen. Thank you. We will go to our final song, okay? Christ for the world we sing, and that's why we sing, okay? We might sing for the world, but we sing for Jesus Christ in our worship and our praise. Remember his words to us. They are there to guide us on the path. Sometimes we don't know the path, but continue to go into him and ask him. So go in the grace and in the peace and in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, for in him we celebrate. Hallelujah and amen. amen. God bless. Have a wonderful week.